what you want, what you want, what you want. That's what you want for me. What you want. That's what you want for me. You gotta be holy. That's what you want for me. Hallelujah. How many want what he wants for you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no need of us saying we want holiness. If that's what he wants for me and what he wants from me, the scripture tells us to be holy because he is holy. But the question is, do I even want for him what he wants for me? Do I want to be holy? Or am I just okay being saved? I'm telling you, the day is coming where God is separating those who just want his stuff from those who want him. I have discovered God is better. Amen. Hallelujah. Better than anything. Hallelujah. He's greater than anything. He's, he, he is all of that. Whatever I need, whatever I even thought I wanted, I've discovered that God is better. Hallelujah. I just want God. Amen. Listen, let's get into the word this morning. Go with me to Philippians. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 1 and 2. Praise God. And if you would do me a favor and put that on the screen in the CEV. Most of you, especially those of us who have our paper Bibles, you probably don't have that version in your hand. So I give you permission, praise God, if we would still, while standing, if you need to, just look on the screen. It's up there. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible reads, and this is Philippians chapter 2, verse 1, out of the um, CEV. Christ encourages you and his love comforts you. God's spirit unites you and you are concerned for others. Verse 2 says, now make me completely happy. Live in harmony by showing love for each other. Be united in what you think as if you were only one person. You may have your seats in the presence of our life-changing King. Father, we bless you and thank you this morning for your word. And we pray that it will go forth with power, with clarity, and with understanding. And God, we pray as always that your word would not just fall by the wayside or among stones or thorns, but that it would fall on the prepared heart of every listener in this room. We, God, attend to what Jesus said, and that is that we would hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us, so that the word we receive would take deep root in our hearts and bring forth fruit that will glorify you and you alone. And for that, we do bless you, and we do thank you, and we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we're, here we are now, moving right along in 2024, and um, our mantra for this year is one house. One house. Reaching the world with the gospel. We need to be on the same page. Amen. We need to be walking, understanding that our purpose, our one harmonious purpose is to see people saved, to see those who are not on their way to heaven on their way, to see those that are struggling in their walk with the Lord to struggle no longer. Our, our one purpose is to see the people of God grow, the people that don't know God come to know him, and those of us that are growing will find someone to disciple. There's still work to do no matter what level we're on, amen? Because the Lord is indeed coming back. And sometimes we, we downplay that as to think he's going to come back with a bag full of grace and just let everybody in. Hallelujah. We, we somehow, and the reason I say that is though we don't, dis, we don't say it out of our mouths, we display it out of our living that we really believe God's going to come back. The Bible says he's coming back in the, in the, in the blink, in the twinkling twinkling of an eye and the, the twinkling of an eye but we literally I believe think he's coming back winking at our at our ignorance the scripture says he winked at there that's past tense at their ignorance he's not winking no more 
Our eyes have been opened to the truth. And so what he's saying to us is it's imperative that my house still remain a house of prayer to all nations. And in order for that to happen, we, the people of God, have to ensure that we are one house, that we are operating under what God has given us, the mandate, the standard being the word of God. Amen? Amen. Now, with that said, what I want to deal with today, I, I want us to, to, to get into what we call the principles of unity. The principles of unity. There, we, we said on, on, on our New Year's Eve service, and we, we reiterated that we really want to refocus. We want to reintroduce. We want to make sure that we understand that we are walking in the Ten Sayings, that we, that we are keeping, we said keeping the Ten Commandments, walking in the Ten Sayings, and, and growing and the 10 kingdom keys to maturity. These things are paramount for us. It ensures that we are one house. And so today, I want to begin um, by focusing on that, and we will we'll dig a little deeper. But as we talk about the principles of unity, the Bible says in Psalm 133, you don't have to go there, we, but we, we said this, I believe, last week. Psalm 133, verse 1 says, How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For brethren to dwell together in unity, for it is like it said, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, right? Uh, even Aaron's beard, but it didn't stop there. The scripture says that it went all the way down to the skirts of his garment. It says unity is like the dew on Mount Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. It says, for there the Lord have commanded the blessing. The commanded blessing is life evermore. There, where? Not on the mountain, but there, the place of unity. Where brethren dwell together in unity, the Lord has commanded the blessing there. It, 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 it behooves us to get there. Amen? And so, as we've been talking about that dwelling in unity, we talked a little bit about that last week. You and I, you and I tie, right? There's the, you cannot spell unity with I first, right? You cannot put yourself in front of the, the you. When you spell unity, you all, unity starts with you, not I. It starts with you, not I. And wh where we've been struggling is I am allowing you to be a part of my life yes. instead of dying to myself to be a part of yours. You will get it. Don't, don't trip yet. Don't trip. But I'm telling you, the reason so many of us having friendship issues is because we've been trying to friend someone based on our criteria, which should be the word of God. And once we get past that, if we don't have like temperament, if we don't, if we don't agree, if we don't have the same uh, likes and dislikes outside of the word of God, let's agree to be a sibling. Are y'all here? Because friendships cannot be forced. They must be fostered. They have to, if, if it's God, it's God. If it's not, it's okay. Are y'all here? Now, now, with that said, I want to look real quickly, the first thing, because we talked about uh, keeping the Ten Commandments. How do we keep them? Well, let's look at it real quick, because I want to spend my time on these Ten Sayings, but I don't want to ignore the Ten Commandments. The, the simplicity of the Ten Commandments is this. The Bible says, go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. How do we keep? Because we got to keep them. We got to keep them. Say keep them. And the only way we can keep them is we need to know them. We keep them, but we keep them not only by knowing them, we keep them by purposing to, to do them, right? But Matthew chapter 12, if you would look at Matthew chapter 12, uh, verse number 34. Uh, you know, Jesus, most of his time spent with the Pharisees was always asking questions because they were always trying to find a way to trap him and to, and to say, aha, see, I knew it. You're not who you say you are. But of course, y'all know, every time they would try to trap him with a question, it would just come back on them and make them look even, even more stupid, more, more ignorant, because he would take their question and then and pose one to them that they could never answer, right? But the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, and we pick up in verse number 34. Notice this. It says, are you there? Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Am I in the right? I said Matthew 12, 34. I don't think I'm in the right place. 
What is verse 40? I mean, 34 says. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not where I want to be. Y'all do. Yeah, listen, go to Mark. Let's see. Let me make sure now, because that don't sound right. I know what I want to say, but that's not it. Amen. Mark, the question, there was a question that was arise. Mark chapter 12. That's where I want you to go. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, because the question was, was posed to Jesus. And look at verse, let's go to verse 28. It says, and one of the scribes came having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment? Because I'm convinced in order for us to keep the Ten Commandments, we need to be obedient to the greatest commandment. And the greatest commandment is the first commandment. So they asked, he asked Jesus this question, which is the greatest or which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered, are you there? Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Jesus answered and said, the first of all commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength notice what he says this is the first commandment now think about it for a moment how do we keep the ten commandments we don't need to keep the ten commandments by remembering the ten how about just doing the first one love the lord thy god with all of thy heart with all of thy soul and with all of thy mind if you love the lord thy god with all of your heart soul and mind would you do what you do you understand i mean it's so simple it's not a it's not a it's not a calculus uh, equation. This is, this is simple math. If I love God with all of my heart, then part of my heart wouldn't be bothered with you because that would be a part of the heart that can't love God. This makes sense. Then he takes it a step further because notice what Jesus says in verse 31. Just in case you said, yeah, but you don't know so-and-so. He says, and the second is like. You asked me about the greatest, so the greatest one is this, but let me tell you, there's one that's right next to it, and that's the second one, and it says, namely this. What is it? Thou shalt love thy neighbor. How? Now, I'm about to go somewhere, and I'll be down there in a minute, but, but watch this. So, Mark Clarice, that literally says that if you, if, if you hate me, you hate yourself. If you say you're keeping the commandments because you're supposed to love your neighbor the way you love you. The reason so many of us have problems in our relationships is this. It's not, your poor, it, it's not that I don't like you. I don't like myself. I don't even like me. How am I going to love you if I'm struggling with loving myself? Are y'all here? It's real quiet, but it's okay. We'll just keep reading. It's scripture. I ain't give you nothing but the Bible thus far. He says, the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor. How? As now, let's go ahead and, and make that 2024. You should love your neighbor the same way you love you. Now, what does he say? There is none other commandment greater than these. How do we know? What, do you steal from yourself? No, sir. Well, why steal from your neighbor? You lie on yourself? Stop lying to your neighbor. You lie about yourself? Well, now, some of y'all do. You know that fish wasn't that big. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Do you covet your own stuff? So why are you covenant your neighbor? He said, listen, if you love your neighbor the way you love yourself, we wouldn't have these problems. You wouldn't cheat on your wife because you would see your neighbor as your wife. I ain't touching you because I don't want you touching mine. This is too easy. So how do we get here? Because we're not keeping. We're not keeping the Ten Commandments. We're not keeping them. You want to learn how to keep them? You don't keep them by rehearsing them. You keep them by loving the Lord thy God, with all of the heart, with all thy soul, and with all your mind. And then love your neighbor the same way you love yourself. Love God, love myself, love everybody else. What is the golden rule? The, the golden rule is biblical. It's out of scripture, but everybody says it. Even atheists say the golden rule. What is it? Do unto others as you would have them 
do unto you. What does that mean? Treat folk the way you want to be treated. Right. It's amazing to me, you the meanest, the, 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 the meanest, meanest scoundrel in the room, and your feelings, you got big old puffy feelings on your sleeve. You can't handle nobody saying nothing to you, and you don't say nothing nice to anybody, and all you're doing is reaping what you're sowing. You would think you would at least wear a jacket to cover your feelings up. Do you understand? Now, you know, Pastor Sheila said that I'm a, she says that I'm a wordsmith. Because, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm saved, thank God, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. But, you know, I used to, I, I, I would get myself out of, out of situations uh, with my mouth. I, I didn't, I didn't, as a matter of fact, I don't re recall having a fist fight. I think I had maybe one in the second grade. I think I had another one. I hit a guy when I was in the eighth grade, and, and I got hit when I was in the ninth grade. I'm just being honest with you. So I've, I've never fought like that because I've always been able to talk my way out of stuff. Now, I would, I would now. I would cause people to want to hit me because I would talk about you till you start crying. Then I got saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he sanctified my, my tongue. Praise God. But Pastor Sheila warns folk because folks still try to go there with me every once in a while, you know. And I don't have a problem. I love it. I'll, we can, that's why I love you, you shallow, deep people that are trying to figure this out. I was deep and you ain't that deep. Let's go. Bring me your scripture. We can debate it. I ain't got a problem with that. You understand? Because this is where I, I mean, and I have to be careful because I mess around and, and enjoy it to the point where I'm in my flesh about it. And why am I saying that? Because you do know 50% uh, of your child is 100% of you. Now, my children, you know, praise God, they got, they, you know, they, they Josh, Joshua kind of, they didn't get quite my complexion, you know, they didn't get my height, but my they got my mouth. They got my mouth. She kind of she kind of got my mouth bad. Now the problem, not only did she get my mouth. Now Josh got my mouth and my feelings. Which means Josh would cut you and look at you like, well, if you didn't come so close, my blade wouldn't hit you. So, you know, I love you. And it was for dinner. She kind of got my mouth, but she got her mom's feelings. Now, Sheila don't like nobody to hurt her feelings. So she, be, she doesn't say nothing that will hurt your feelings because, again, the law of sowing and reaping. If I hurt you, then i got to be prepared to get hurt. Right. Now, most people in church that say, hey, it's amazing, some folks say she's she, Pastor, Pastor Sheila, a bully. The problem is she's not a bully. She don't, she don't want to be bullied. So I know she ain't bullying you. The real issue is your flesh don't like holiness, <laughs> period. And now, as, as touchy as she is in her feelings, she ain't going to go with the banter because she don't like that. She kind of likes the banter, but she don't like you to come back. So she tried to be me and the mama. You can't, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm saying that because some of y'all, some of y'all are, are just, can we just call it what it is? Some people that say they love God are just straight up mean. Just mean and nasty and have the audacity to get offended because somebody hurt your feelings. A person that say they're saved and mean and nasty, you, you can write this down, put it on the record or whatever. I believe that person don't even love themselves. They can't because if you still mean and one, listen, one of the simple attributes of, of, of being saved is that you get the joy of the Lord. Yeah. You understand? You would imagine even something at least made Hitler laugh. Yes, you got Christians that don't laugh unless it's at the detriment of somebody else. Now, don't get mad at me. I'm going to move on because I don't want to get stuck there. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know if that person's a, a Christian at all because your, your behavior isn't Christ-like. Are you sure you saved? When the only time you're happy is when your quote unquote enemy is down? Keep the ten. How do we keep them? How do we keep the Ten Commandments? By obeying the first and the second. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. He says, upon these two, the entire book, not just the Ten Commandments, the entire, the entire book hinges 
on these two. Are y'all still here? Yes, sir. So now we got the Ten Commandments, but where I'll probably get stuck, I know I won't finish it, and that's okay. Uh, I want to at least start on it, and that is these ten sayings. The principles of unity. Principles of unity. When we talk about principles of unity, what does that mean? We, well, there's some principles to it. You know, we, it's more than just saying we're together. Well, how, do we, how do we ensure we're together beyond just what we say? Are y'all here? So I want you now go with me. Uh, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's look at this because if we're going to be one house, with a harmonious purpose of reaching the world with the gospel. We've got to be on the same page. And I said it last week, I don't just want to be on the same page, I want to be in the same sentence. You understand? I want to be in the same, I want us to be, I want us to be so together that literally if one portion of the body is hurting, the whole body is feeling that pain. Sometimes I think, Chris, that today's body, the body of Christ today, is more like an android than an organism. You understand? Y'all remember Star Wars? Uh, I've just been practicing my movie night. I haven't done movie night in a while. So I've been playing with which ones. I don't know about Star Wars. Too many of them. But, but the one thing about Star Wars is, you know, you had Luke Skywalker, right? And I don't know all the characters, so just work with me. You got Luke. What was it? Princess Diana. Right, Chewbacca. Uh, uh, Chewbacca. Now, but then the problem was even even Chewbacca was some creature, some creature. But R two D two was a robot. So Chewbacca couldn't speak. I mean, Luke understood him. Which one? One of them ranges. You, I know you know who. Han Solo. I knew. Don't whisper. You know he know. Yeah. Anyway, Han Solo understood. Chewbacca was language, and he knew what he was talking about, right? But whatever, but because he was a creature, listen, though he wasn't human, but he was a creature, if he stubbed his paw, his whole body, RTD2, if a fuse went out, they just replaced it. The body looks too much like an android. Because we don't even feel it when our brothers are off. I don't understand it. How, and especially with the head. This part blows my mind, especially with the head. Now I'm on Star Wars. I got to get off of that because I was thinking about Mandalorian. You know, and they blew a thing up. They just took pieces and parts because it was an android. And they just took all these parts and put this thing together and stuck a head on it. Plugged it in, put the, put the unit in his chest, turned it on, and it started talking. Good as new. And that's how the body of Christ looks. No feelings. Somebody gets bothered, we just unplug them. You get bothered, you just disconnect, go find another body and just attach to it. So church has got six arms and one leg. 30 toes, because then there's a church on the other side of town that's wondering where his foot at. Because we have no feeling. And the reason we have no feeling, because we forgot we're a body, not, not a robot. And this religion, religion is robotic. How do I know? Because the one thing about the robot, the robot is, is kind of like a... a, a a response to the command. So on Sunday, we saved. The choir walk in, march in. Choir, I mean, we'd say something wrong with the church if the choir just walked in. They're supposed to march in. You know, we're supposed to, you know, everybody get with that, and then we put the clap and everything and all this. Robotic. Right? Then church is over, ain't nobody in the parking lot still singing. But a body. The body. 
when we was kids, Adrian, going down to Center One, Two, Three, the body. We go watch um, Into the Dragon. Everybody come out, still trying to, you know, thank God for His grace and His mercy, because we we should have gotten beat down. We just walking down the street, kicking that stuff, you know, right? Are y'all here? Now, how is it that you could leave a movie and, and pretend to be Bruce Lee, but leave church and not even at least pretend to be saved? We should have been working on our house ever since we got the mantra of one house. I'll be back. What did I preach last week? Uh, hold on. Let me get my notes. <laughs> how many of y'all take notes at the movies? Boy, it'd be getting quiet quick. I tell you, and here's why I say that, because at the movies, William, we don't go to the movies for our spirit. Even Christian movies, we go there and have, you know, Pastor Sheila, no, I, I'm bad with that, because I'd be like, babe, it's a, I get the point, but this is a boring movie. You know, I mean, I hear what they're saying, man, this is a good point, but brother, their budget is weak, because I mean, the acting is bad. My soul is like, this ain't entertainment. Just, he could have just read this to me. You understand? Yeah. I'm serious. Because when movies, robotically, in my life, is entertainment. Church is not. Let me get to my point. Are y'all in 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Notice this, verse 10. Paul is preaching or t talking to the church at Corinth, and I'm going to get into it as we go on. I'm not going to try to cram it all into your, into your hearing today. I want to give you enough, though, that you go out pretending like, right? <laughs> I want you to go out walking in something. Amen. Amen. I want you on the parking lot, hot karate in the devil. Amen. Right? Amen. He says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you <laughs> but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment so we have these what we call the 10 sames there's 10 there's there's more than 10 but there's 10 in particular that we use we've used it on multiple occasions we share it with our leaders and we want to make sure we get this because we need to be walking in the 10 sames and so when we talk about principles to unity the first thing he mentions is amazing to me and, and I, you know I always pray God show me what I what I didn't see not that I didn't see something but even show me more amen that, that perhaps I can get it now now are you, I know you are. are you, you don't, she ain't the only one in here cold, is she? Uh, Y'all cold up in here? Yes. My goodness, praise the Lord. Well, Chris, you know what? If you ain't cold, brother, God bless you. The rest of us, the preacher, now, I, the preacher shouldn't be cold. I'm feeling the draft. Y'all got the air on up in this joint? Hallelujah. I just have, I just believe Jesus is going to be the one controlling the climate in heaven. You know what I'm saying? We ain't in heaven yet, so let's fix the climate. Praise the Lord. It's a little, it, amen, amen. I'd rather y'all be sweating up in church. You know, amen. Don't, it's cold up in here. Man, my hands are cold. What's going on? I can't preach right. No wonder why I ain't found my spot. Then I look over there. It looked like, looked like Keisha at a football game. She blowing her hands and stuff. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's, y'all all right? Amen, amen. Watch this. The, he says, he says the same, the same speech that we all speak the same thing now I, I was saying this because I, I always ask the Lord Lord show me even when I pray to come out before I come out uh, to minister the word I always ask the Lord you know again to to sanctify me anoint me afresh and anew and one of my prayers in that is that you will show me what I didn't even see before and many times we'll see things and we'll say well that's not my order and that's okay this is the revelation that God gave me why well, start with speech Think about this now. The first, the first of our ten sayings that we need to have that is the same is that we're speaking the same thing. Why start with speech? Because nothing happened in the earth place until God spoke. Nothing happened. The Bible says, and, and God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God 
moved over the, the face of the waters and God said. And, you know, he said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, here's the thing. Was light. It's still light. Because God spoke it. Right? And now, the reason I want you to get this, the Bible says, Paul says, listen, we should be speaking the same thing. We should be what? Speaking, speaking the same thing. How powerful are our words? Watch this. Can I, I told you I won't get far, but I, I promise we'll get far enough. I mean, come on and just talk to you a little bit. Since we're in Genesis, we didn't go there, but I want you to think about this. Before the fall, this is how, this is how, this is how important walking in the ten sames are, Carmen. Before the fall, God, the Bible says, God created man. We know the scripture. Created man. In Genesis chapter 1. God said, let us create man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion, right, over all the fish of the, uh, the, of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. And now, he didn't give us dominion over one another, but he said, you know, let's do that. And, and, they, and so he, he created man. Right. Then he even goes so far as to breathe into man. And now man becomes a, a living soul. So now God created male and female, created he them. He created male and female. And then he from the creation of male and female, he breathed into the man and man became a living soul. Y'all still here. So now man is a living soul. And what does God do with the man? What he didn't do with any other creature because no other creature was created in his image and after his likeness what God did with the man was commune commune the root of community communication God literally would come down and just talk with the man now, you, now watch this because the scripture says God brought everything he created to the man not, and it's, this is where we miss it sometimes. We'll, we'll, don't, don't, don't add your thinking into what the scripture says. Amen, the Bible says to see what he would call it, not to have man name it. Right. Because we'll miss it. We'll think God asked the man what it should be. No. Because man and God were so linked, they said the same thing. So what Adam called a lion is what God had already called a lion and Adam called it the same thing. So the scripture says that's what his name was. Whatever Adam called it was his name, not because Adam named it, but because Adam and God were saying the same thing. How do we know it's that? Because then God says it's not good that man should be alone. Let me go ahead and, and create him, uh, make a help meet for him. Now notice what he didn't do. He didn't go back to creation because I've already created her. I just haven't brought her forth. Are y'all still here? That's why some of us get all bit out of shape, Sharita. I'm just struggling. And God said, I've already, I've already finished it. I just haven't brought it forth. I'm in your Bible in the process of time. The Bible says before the foundations of the world, the lamb was slain, but it goes in Galatians chapter 3 says in the process of time. There was a virgin that gave birth. Now why, why are you waiting back there? Because he'd been waiting. I just needed in the process of time I brought him forth. Now it's time for me to bring this woman forth. The female is already created, but it's time for me to bring forth a woman. This ain't too heavy. So, so watch this. I promise you I'm in your Bible and, and this is dealing with speech. Because the scripture says he, now he puts the man to sleep. He takes out of the man the rib and forms the rib into a woman. And then he brings the woman to the man. And what does the man call her? Woman. woman. Because the revelation is the only difference between you and me is you have a womb. Where did Adam get that insight from? God. Because that's what God would have called her. Then comes the serpent. The Bible says he was more subtle, more crafty than any other animal that God created. Now watch this. That means Adam knew it. Because God brought all the animals to Adam to see what he would call it. So Adam said, that's a serpent. He said, that's right, son. You're right. Yeah, why are you calling the serpent, Adam? Because he's crafty. 
He's more subtle than anything else you created. He's the most beautiful animal in the kingdom. As a matter of fact, even today, snakes on their belly, they're still some of the most beautiful. Now, you ain't got to like them. Most of y'all don't see the beauty because you're scared of them. But the beauty of the snake, it's, it's amazing how the, the, the patterns on these snakes and because they were created that way. The only difference today and from their creation is now they crawl. And because of the fall, now the poisons and all these things. But before then, the snakes came like everybody else. They were beautiful. So here comes the snake. Here's my point. Watch this now. And the serpent now yields his body to the fallen angel Lucifer. Because he still needs a body. Am I going too fast? He gets in the snake, and he, I thought you was going to finish that. Part. And he talks to the woman. Speech. He talks to the woman. And for the first time in creation, they're hearing something contrary to what they've heard. For the first time in creation, you find speech contrary to what's spoken. Why do you think the devil don't want you reading your Bible? We can watch Star Wars 30 and can't memorize Psalm 1. No condemnation. I just want you to understand why do you think that happens? Because that's the last thing I want you to get in you lest you start sounding like God. Y'all still here? So watch this. He talks to the woman and his question to the woman is about what God said. Not what he did. Think about it. He could have said, why do you think God put him here first? I would have just put y'all out here at the same time, see? No, he didn't do that. Why? Because God didn't say that. He said, have God said. You sure that's what God mean? You sure? The first trip is our speech to get us to say contrary to what God has said. If I'm speaking contrary to God, then I come to church, what's the likelihood of us all saying the same thing? We got all kinds of languages in the house of God now. Watch this. Go to Genesis. I ain't got the time, so just go with me. If y'all weren't in intercessory prayers today, I'd encourage you to get that. We talked about the harmonious purpose of prayer, the need that we need to be saying the same thing even in prayer. But watch this. Go to Genesis chapter 11. I'm not going to go back up there yet, Ms. Clary, so I'm trusting you. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 11. The Bible talks about these people. Now, I need you to start at verse 1 just for this sake. And I, I, I gotta, I'll read fast, but I want you to see it. It says, and the whole earth was what? How much of the earth? So obviously we got more than just the Adam and Eve now. Now the earth has been populated. The whole earth is speaking the same thing. This is powerful. It says the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Keep going. Verse 2. Watch this now. One language, one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Keep going. Verse 3 says, and they said one to another. Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they uh, had they for, for mortar or for mortar. And then verse four, watch this. And they said, y'all still here? Yes, sir. They said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us, let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. And the Lord came down. Now, this part just always 
baffles me because there's no mention of God. They didn't have God, they had unity. And their godless unity made God say, let me see what's going on down here. The Bible says God came down. What does it say? Came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. God wasn't even in it. But notice what God, he came and saw it. Creation, God sees and says at the same time. He saw it, then watch this. God begins to speak. Look at verse 6. Y'all still here? And the Lord said, watch, what does he say? Behold, the people, I said it yesterday, don't, I know some of your translations says are. No, is is the right word. Because what God is looking for is a oneness. You understand? We are one might be proper. We is one is the revelation God is looking for. The two shall become one. Are you here? So he says, the people is one, and they have all, how many? One language. one language. And this they begin to do. And now, what can stop them? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Because they're strong? Because they speak in the same thing. So there will be nothing restrained from them which they have imagined to do. What do we got to do, God? Verse 7. Go to, let us go down and there, do what? Confound their land. Don't take their strength. Don't make them crazy. Don't plague them with sickness and disease. Just stop them from speaking the same. Wow. If you ever want to break unity, just stop people from saying the same thing. That's what the devil did in the garden. Now here comes the Lord having to do it with godless people. He said, because if we don't, there is nothing that they won't be able to accomplish that they've imagined to do, all because they are saying. Now think about this. Why can't we, with all of these churches, take this city? Because we're not, come on. We got so many variations of what truth is, it's scary. You understand? And so he says, look at this now. He says, go down, uh, go to rather, let us go down and, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. What else do we need to do? That's it. That's all you got to do. When, when you're all, all googly-eyed, you know, dating and all googly-eyed, ooh, this is the Lord. Mm -hmm. And all of that. Well, how, how, oh my God, the Bible even says, that what he has put together, let no man put asunder, and, 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 and the two shall become one. How are we going to get them to break up? That's too easy. Just keep him focused on him. You know what? Her focused on her. Uh -huh. And let's just go ahead with the law of averages. More than likely, they ain't both focused on the Lord. So, let's just keep it like that. And then, watch this. Let me mess with his heart. Not his hearing, his heart. Why? Because the heart is the center of man, and the center of the heart is the... Yeah. So the first time y'all disagreed, I promise you, was more than likely over something one or the other said. That's the truth, Dr. Poole. I'm walking over here because they got too quiet. Now, now likely, William, likely. the response was, I ain't say that. True. Then it comes back, well, you did say that. Well, that ain't what I meant. Now, guess what the enemy is doing in the background? You know why? Because even though y'all ain't yelling, you're no longer saying the same thing. And you're wondering why you're struggling in your marriage. You're wondering why you're struggling in your friendships and why only people like you like you like you. Like you. <laughs> 
I'll repeat it. The only people that like you, that are fond of you, are fond of you the way you are. The only people that like you, like you, like you. The moment you try to be like God, I don't like you no more. That's why some of us are struggling right now. You know what? Tressa changed. Yes. But you haven't. And your non-changing has made it difficult to like me. I heard somebody told me one time, uh, said, Pastor, your preaching has changed. I was like, I'm reading the same Bible. If anything, it's full of grace now. The problem is your lifestyle has changed. What I preach about, you actually do. When I used to preach about fornication, you hollered and said, say that. Now you're doing that and you say I have no grace. So the real issue isn't my preaching has changed. You've stopped living what I'm preaching. And so we ain't saying the same thing no more. Now watch this. I got to go because I knew I thought I'd get further than just one. Because we got to have the same speech. Say the same speech. Amos 3.3 Amos 3 says, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? Go to Matthew chapter 26. And I, I got a couple of minutes. My goodness, man, that clock went fast. I got a couple minutes, because I'm not going to take 10 weeks talking about these 10 sayings. That's not the goal, but, but I, I definitely thought we'd give you a couple here, a couple there. But we're going to start with this first one, because it's the most important to me. It's, it's the most important in this regard, because death and life are in the power of your tongue. And so the, the reason speech is so important, why do we need to be saying the same thing? Because what we'll do, listen, what we'll wind up doing, Imani, will become translators and interpreters. Now, a translator is one who takes a language and says that in the language that the other person can understand, right? You translate it. Or an interpreter is one who, who a translator rather is one who repeats what's said. An interpreter is one who hears it and then gives it to me in the way I can understand it. That's why so many of y'all get hung up with tongues because somebody will have a message in tongues that lasts three minutes and then the message, the answer would be two words. You say, that, that can't be all that God has said, but the gift is not the gift of translation, it's the gift of interpretation. The interpreter gives you what's needed out of what was said. The translator repeats what was said. You understand? And so when we talk about this, the reason I say that, many people become translators, interpreters of the word instead of speakers of the word because you say it the way you think I want to hear it instead of just calling it what it is. And before you know it, I'll say your translation is the gospel. Even in your Holy Bible, there's, there's been, been a fight for, for, for years for translations to change and make the word of God genderless. But the problem with making the word genderless, then it takes the revelation out of the scripture that says, He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor for the Lord. Because if I make it genderless, I give a woman permission to go get her husband. Y'all got quiet again. If I make it genderless, I give a woman permission to go get her wife and expect the blessing. Y'all real quiet. So we have to be careful because what we'll do, Chris, and here's where interpretation and translation come from. You can't interpret what you don't, number one, understand. So there's people in the world telling me, you know, I'll say, well, it's not, don't, so I got to be careful now because I don't want y'all to get too bent out of shape. I already tell, right? I already, you can feel it tightening up already. Where he going? Don't get offended. Put your fence down before I say this. <laughs> okay, because I'll say something and you say, Pastor, they don't say that no more. So you will help me with today's vernacular out there because you know I ain't out there. <laughs> but what I'm trying to figure out, why you know everything they saying? Out there. Yes, sir. Me and you should be still saying stuff tight. Tight, yeah. Off the chain, sir. Yeah. yeah. Remember we used to have hoopties. Yeah. Pastor, they don't say that no more. Who is they and why you know it so well? So you interpret it for me. I can't get no help. You translate it for me. Pastor, they don't do it like that no more. Who is they? Well, the people I hang with. 
And every once in a while my tongue get tied because I come to church and I try to get 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 busy or giddy or whatever y'all getting with it. Yeah, we laughing. Yeah, one of the scandals right now is making the God's house look like the club. Having folk at the altar doing what people in the club do and then saying, but people got saved. My question is, did they? Or did they get saved on your standard? Because just because you raised your hand, shook my hand, and said, I received Jesus, don't mean you got saved. That means you shook my hand, raised your hand, and said what I told you to say. Why, don't you, why do you think I don't, don't do the prayer, the quote-unquote prayer of salvation here? And it's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I can tell you, repeat after me. Repeat after me. Shabba shabba. Duba duba. Amen. Didn't you just repeat after me? What did I say? Shabba. What did that mean? You don't know. Repeat after me. Father God, I believe Jesus is your son. I receive him in my heart. Live in my heart. Be my God. All of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, we say, if you prayed that prayer, you're saved. That's not true. You just repeat it after me. How do I know you believe that? The Bible doesn't say if you say this, you're saved. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You got to believe in your heart, Chris. You got to what? Can I tell you? Did I tell y'all go somewhere? Did I tell y'all go somewhere? Hang out there. They mess around. Gave me two more minutes. Ooh, just hang out there for a minute. I remember when y'all got married. What y'all on? Like year 11 now? I remember, right? The boy was all nervous, sweating and stuff. He was concerned that his old life was going to be manifested in his new life. I'm telling the whole truth. This is, this is, and I'm sure you was over there sweating a little bit too. But he's sweating, all nervous. You know, I believe God has spoke. Even this one. You, just, you, just, you, you ain't even got a whole year under your belt yet. It's all okay. Just keep your belt on. You hear me? Keep your belt on. You keep your belt on. The belt will expand. You have years on your belt. Now, don't let your waistline expand with the belt. Keep the belt tight. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't, I can't, I'm just saying, I told, I said, listen, you ain't going to be up in here looking 30 and here I am looking 50. Folk wonder, is this my oldest child and all that foolishness? The devil is a liar. But anyway, let me stay focused. Now, I'll go my two minutes right there. Here's the point. Here's the point. Can I tell it? Listen. He believed, and he believed that God had told him who his wife was. Right? I believe it. I said, well, go ahead and act out on it. Ask her. What's the hesitation? Watch this. I want to make sure this is God. Well, what's your way? No, sir, because I believe I heard God, but I know I hear me. And I've done what I've wanted to do in the past. And while I was doing it, I thought I was doing what God said. And I don't want to mess this up. Y'all still here? So, but the moment you stepped out and did what he put in your heart, watch what happened. The fear you had about the old Jew changed. Hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Because you spoke what was in your heart. I told you what I believe God said. And the old dude I was afraid of marrying you don't exist no more. Are y'all here? Now, I promise you I'm going somewhere. You said, Pastor, what's that got to do with anything? It's got this to do with it. Just because you repeated after me, if there was nothing, the old dude going to continue to do the same thing. I just keep giving you bigger rocks apologizing for being the same old dude. Jesus. I think I saved 30 times. This time is for real. Y'all know how y'all, Lord, this time <laughs> is for real. Where does that come from? Don't get the, the, I haven't forgot what I'm saying. You know where it starts, Adrian? You ready? My mouth. Because I'm not speaking 
Same thing. I want a wife because he got one, not because God spoke. I, I got to go. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. This is real. People struggling. William, I, I talk, can I? I'm, I got to read Matthew 26. But the, Chris, I'm sitting here. I'm not. I, I don't even have to tell you to hear my heart. Y'all hear my heart on this. The Bible says the prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown. And I understand that. I, and and I, I told Pastor Sheila for the first time in my life, I, I get it beyond a revelation. I'm living it. I was, I had to do a phone conference Friday night, prayer conference. I was supposed to just talk about serving in the house. It's a prayer conference. So everybody on the line is muted. I can't hear nobody. You know, I, a good preacher, I need to hear something. I'm like, I hope y'all said that. Did I drop my call? Can somebody say something, please? Can you unmute for a moment? So one of the, and the pastor texts me, amen, just keep going. I'm going somewhere. And so I'm sharing. And, and when I finished, praise God, I finished. Listen to me. I finished, Chris. I went downstairs. I ate. Turned the TV on, put my feet up, and chilled. So get a text. Me and Pastor Sheila get a text. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't even know who this is. The next day, the pastor called me. He said, I've made, I told my secretary, take that what you shared. It's mandatory learning for my leaders. I taught my leaders this, and they don't do it. Talking about the same. Y'all here? I said, how in the world and the under earth? Can we have this many marriage problems at Destiny? Now, we could have problems. We should have some. But marriage? Amen. 31 years old, sitting next to you. 30. 30. I'm making you older than you are. 30. You're looking old, dog. You're getting there. <laughs> marriage age of brother. It's all good. I'm just, come on, y'all. He ain't a kid no more. I'm just saying he married now. He ain't the boy y'all thought. You 30 years old. And the loudest you've ever heard me is at church. I don't even slam my car door. They've never heard doors slammed. There's no holes in my walls. And yet, marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage, a destiny looks like we ain't saved. How are you telling me you hearing my voice? We can't be saying the same thing. It's impossible. I just go to destiny. That's where my Android leads me on Sunday. Good word. We don't like that. It's the gospel truth. It's a shame. The area of our ministry that is hit the hardest is marriage. When folk ask us, when can you come to our city? Can I send my pastors to you to talk to them about marriage? And I say, are you sure? My deacons don't listen to me. You sure? What's the disconnect? Watch this, William. You hear me, but you go home, and pride won't let you say what I say. I ain't going to be, I ain't his flunky. What's wrong with you? Flunky? Are you serious? Is that where we're still hanging out on that? If we say the same thing, Chris, shouldn't we expect the same result? The reason your wife is submitted to you because you go home and tell her? No, why? Because I've never told her. The reason your wife tripping because you go home and tell her? You know, Pastor Rob said, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. What I said is to you. Ain't got nothing to do with her. Amen, and when you call her, she don't want to hear about him. Amen. So how y'all having problems? This is real. The Lord is coming back for a church without spot and the people in the church don't even like each other because we won't say the same thing. 
not to each other. We're not saying what we're hearing. And we're not believing what we're hearing is what God is saying. So what are we doing at church? Repeat after me. What do we do at home? Say what we want to say. So that's why I don't say, okay, bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Because that's no guarantee you're going to go home and live this gospel. No guarantee, sir. This is how I know you got it. You start saying what I say. I say what they say. We say what the word says. We ought to sound alike. I got to close. Matthew 26. I got to close. Y'all all right? Last verse. I, gotta, I can't leave you hanging because I ain't going to remember Matthew 26. Well, I, I take that back. I could remember. I don't want to remember Matthew 26 next week because I want to move further. Verse 73. I ain't got time to dig into it, but I want to just say this, and I'll let you chew on this for the whole week. This is like that prequel, the, the sequel, prequel to the sequel, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's coming. Yeah. It ain't here yet, but I'm just give you a little teaser. Peter Jesus told, Jesus told Peter, listen, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter said, no, I'll die with you. Okay, Peter, I hear you. So there he is. Somebody said, hey, aren't you, aren't you one of them? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Huh. Then, then the, lady, the little girl said, well, you, sh hold on. I'm pretty sure. He said, I, I, uh, you all right? Verse 73. Are you there? Verse 73, watch this in the King James. Mm -hmm. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, the Destonian. Yeah, the members of destiny. <laughs> Surely thou also art one of them. For thy speech betrayeth thee. I got to stop, babe. What blows my mind is what gave Peter away, he sound too much like Jesus. <laughs> What's giving us away that we've been hanging out with the wrong folk? It's the speech. Yes, sir. First thing, the first thing is the speech. You sound like Pastor Sheila. We go, we well, I, even just just the just the long guy. He's Hispanic. She don't talk to him like, hey, how you doing? She, Hello, my friend. I'm like, babe, hey. <laughs> hey. why? It's natural. One of my one of my buddies. One of, my, one of my buddies, Apostle McDonald John, he's from Liberia. When I talked to him, I said, hey, my friend, how are you, man? It is, I'm like, man, look, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. But it's because of who I'm talking with. So I start sounding like who I'm talking with, which I'm going to drop this, and I, I pray God, no condemnation. It, that, therefore, is proof you ain't talking with me if you're struggling in your marriage. It's proof you ain't trying to sound like. If you in that, now if you're struggling in in math, or, or not math. I'm decent in math, but if you're struggling in your English language, you say ain't too much. You probably hang with me. You know what I'm saying? If you're good at golf but not as good as you want to be, you're okay at bowling but it gets boring. You probably hang with me. But you're having problems in your marriage. In your, in your marriage, you still contemplating if God is real? You ain't hanging with me. Your speech gives you away. I wish I had the time. I'll pick it up next week. I got time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We'll pick it up next week. Because I want to talk about a little bit. We're going to get to the next one. It's in the same verse, 1 Corinthians 1.10. That way you can kind of like an assignment. You can look at the next one. Because the next one is mine. But watch this. Too many people have been talking or saying what's on their which only reveals. <laughs> Woo! First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. That's where we're going to start next week. First Corinthians 1, 10. All right? When are we going to start next week? Y'all all right? Now listen, don't y'all blow my phone up today talking about Pastor Tis, talk to me so I can sound like you. <laughs> don't y'all do that. But you got to ask yourself, 
All jokes aside, ask yourself, why, William, why don't I, why don't I, not just sound like him, why don't I want to? What, what, in, what, what is it about my makeup that doesn't want me to be like another man? Your child, five foot three, in the 12th grade, you want him to be the next Michael Jordan? That ain't gonna happen. But you don't want your son to be like you? What, what's the disconnect? It's in our speech. What are you saying? And who are you hanging around that your speech is giving you away? We probably should go on stand up. Y'all can tell they moved the Steelers game to tomorrow. That's why I'm taking my time. You know, I didn't think they was going to make the playoffs anyway, but they made it. Sorry, Richard. Sorry. I'm glad you came to church. Thank God you saved. Because Richard almost didn't come to church today. He almost called in, called in poor. He almost called in sick fan. He did. Sick fan. He almost called in. Because his team, his team lost. They made it, though. They made it. They made it. They made it. That's, ain't that a blessing? They made it. They made it. They made it. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want to pray. We're going to let y'all get out of here. We're going to go about our day. Thank you so much, for real, for listening. But I want you to, I want you to, 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 to make a conscious effort. Listen to me. And I'm, I'm not talking about what's ended. And here's, what, here's the thing. I, I have to share that later. I don't have the time. I'll, I'll, share that, I'll share that with you later, personally and privately. I'll tell you that. But what I, I, I want you to, to lock into this, though. If there's no condemnation, don't leave condemned. <laughs> right? Just say it different. Begin to say it the way God says it. Because when we say it the way he says it, mother, watch this. Eventually, we'll begin to believe it the way he believes it. Then we'll see it the way he sees it. Then we'll have what we say. So, Father, I thank you today. As we prepare to go from this place, my prayer is for those, God, who would say, my speech is all over the place. I, I, I don't say what God says. I have not been walking in the Ten Commandments or keeping the Ten Commandments. I, I, I'm more concerned about myself than anybody else. And, and I want to change or I, I, my speech gives me a way that I still hang with the wrong people, that I, I still hang with people that don't believe God can do it. So I, I speak more doubt than faith. I let, I let concern and worry come out of my mouth more than confidence in what you've said because I've been hanging out with people that have no faith in you. I've been hanging out with, with even sometimes just myself, telling myself that you can't do what your word clearly says you can. And so Father, today I pray for that person that would say, Pastor, that's me. I, I, I want you to pray for me because I've been fighting with my own mind. I've been saying things contrary to what, what I should. My, my mouth has been saying what, what I hear in articles and, and what they say in my classrooms instead of what your word says. I've been, I've been speaking boldly was not even true. And, and I just want you to align my mouth back up. I need my speech to be aligned with the word of God so that I can have what you say. I can't have what you say if I don't say what you say. So I'm, I'm asking you to help me in that area. And then you might be that person that says, Pastor, uh, that don't apply to me. My, what applies to me is I, I've never received Jesus Christ at all. But I, I believe I, I believe today, I don't want to repeat after you a prayer, but I, I believe I'm ready to allow Jesus to come and live in my heart, to be Lord and Savior of my life. And we don't want to pray without you, so if that's you, I want you to come as well. And then I want to say this for those of you who are here, there is no condemnation. We cannot stress it enough. There is no condemnation, but I don't want you to miss this. The altar is what I've done physically. I've come to the altar. Spiritually, I have to allow the Holy Ghost to make the alteration in my life. I can't leave this altar and go back to where I was. I can't go back and doing what I did. I've got to believe God that there will be some type of conviction that will remind me, you asked me to take this. You asked me to tweak this. You asked me to fix this. And so if you want me to fix it, don't go right back and break it again. We trust the Lord. So, Father, I thank you now. And let me say, I forgot, I forget that, you know, praise God. If you are looking for a church home, 
we would love to have you be a part of this house. Now, what you hear is what you get. I wish I had some cookies and cake for you, but I don't. We might have some, you know, but we, this is it. No fruit, fruit. I, I believe we put enough sugar on the word. The word is sweet enough without any additives. This is it. But Jesus wants you to be filled with him. And he is the word of God. So if you want to be a part, we would love to have you. Just let us know. Come on up to the altar and we'll welcome you in as well. Let me go ahead and pray so I can let y'all go. If that's you, never give your heart to the Lord. You, you just want to get it right. I'm working on my speech. Or you say, Pastor, I, I, I want to be a part of this ministry. I want you to come. Y'all all right? Father, we thank you. And we bless you for those who are here. And God, I pray today that you would do what, what I pray you do for me. And that is, Father, sanctify their tongues. Father, that you would align their speech up with you. That they will say what you say. And that, God, they will say it to the point that they believe it. I thank you, Father, that the only speech that will give them away is that the world would know that they've been with Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the foolish banter and, and the things that don't bring any glory to you will cease. Father, that they would begin to be more serious and more aware of what breaks your heart and that they will say what you say, not just about others, but really about themselves. God, that they not be afraid to be who you called them to be. That they not say, well, God, you wouldn't use me because of my past or all of this. Father, I thank you that you use us in spite of us. You use us regardless of us. You use us, God, because even as you said to us last night on my prayer call, Father, we are all just messed up. We're, 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 we, listen, we didn't mess up. We are messes. We're messed up, God. We're, we're toe up from the flow up and all that stuff. We're bent it. We're scarred. We're, we're dented. We're, we're flawed, God. We're broken vessels. And yet and still, you take us. And you don't knock the dents out. You don't paint the rust. What you do is you fill us with your precious spirit. And you make the cargo we carry much more valuable than the container it's in. Help us to see, God, no matter our shape, our size, our gender, our age, our economic status. God, no matter if I finish school, whether I don't have a degree, whether I dropped out, whether I got 30 degrees. Help us to see, Father, that none of that matters. It's the, it's the cargo. It's the cargo. It's what you've put in me that's the most valuable thing. It's Christ in me that's the hope of glory. It's not me. God, I'm... I'm I'm broken, I'm, I'm a mess. And, and sometimes I'm literally lost for words to think that you would use me. But then I realized, God, you use me because I'll allow you. Not because I'm so good or even because I'm so bad. You use me simply because I said yes. And so, Father, our cry today is yes, Lord. Whatever you want. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because we even saying, take my life, take my heart, take my mind. Do what you want with it, God. I'm yours. So today, God, we give you the praise that you receive us as your own and that you do with us what you did, what you deem to be fit in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Listen, before we go. Before we go, those of you who are here, y'all know, I want you to turn around. There's somebody at the altar that's going to minister to you in just a moment. But as they're turning, let's leave with this. Listen to me. The enemy's going to come at you today, especially those of you who came to this altar. Before this day is over, he's going to challenge your speech. He's going to challenge the way you think. He's going to tell you, yeah, yeah, but, but that's not going to change your situation. And what you need to understand is, it doesn't matter what the devil says. I said this before. If he is a liar and the father of lies, William, he can't do anything but lie to me. The only person the devil tells the truth to is God. Because God cannot be, you can't lie in front of him. The devil tells God the truth. He tells you the lie. So when he says you can't, don't say maybe I can't. Start rejoicing because if the devil said I can't, that means I've already started. It's already done. I said it's already done. So, Father, we thank you as we prepare to go from your place of worship. 
back to our homes, back to our jobs, back to that world. Help us to go and not, not stand out as weird, but God, help us not to just fit in as normal. Help us to be known as that one. Let our speech of Jesus give us away. Let them know that we've been with you, Father, until you bring us back into the house of God again. We pray that you would go with us and keep us. Watch over us and protect us. This is always our prayer. We go in peace of the Lord until we see each other again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I love y'all.